Well, good evening, everybody. It is Gerda here from Private Practice Success. And how are you guys doing on this Wednesday evening? So, as usual, we are here for my 90 day vlog challenge. And believe it or not, today is actually day 75. Absolutely amazing. Can't believe it. And very, very proud of myself that I haven't skipped one day. Haven't skipped one day. Um, even Saturdays and Sundays, even when I was feeling off or sick. But I still have 25 to go. <laughs> hey Brooklyn, hi Michelle, thanks for joining me guys. Just gonna quickly share this in two of my Facebook groups, uh, which will allow more people to see this and to know that I'm live and hopefully be able to join us and engage with us live because that just makes it so much more fun. I'm sure you would agree with me. That one's done. So we're in the practice owners group. We're in the masterclass group. And how about we also put this one based on the topic for today in our marketing group. There we go. Awesome. Alrighty. So Brooklyn and Michelle, I'm so glad to see you guys here. Um, if anybody else is joining, um, especially if this is your first live uh, broadcast whilst I'm on live, please let me know, say hi and hello. I realize that very often I do do the live stream during the day and obviously a lot of you will be working, will be in session and won't be on your phone watching Facebook. <laughs> so uh, that's just one of the things that I do like about doing this vlog a tad later at night. Um, I guess the main reason why I'm only coming to you at 8.43 p.m. is the fact that I've just put all my kidlets into bed. <laughs> so I'm still without a husband until tomorrow morning 1 a.m. when he comes back from South Africa. So it's obviously been a rough two weeks, been very, very busy, and um, hence I'm only live now because I first had to do all the mum stuff. Hey Shane, thanks for joining me live. I hope you are doing well. And I must say I've been loving your posts and videos on the uh, motorbike riding that you've been doing lately. It looks really fun and really cool. Okay, so the topic for tonight's vlog is, do you really know? Do you really know what's going on? So I'll give you a bit of a background um, story to where this topic comes from. Um, so uh, maybe just so that you know, I said earlier on, I've done 75 of these vlogs and believe it or not, I haven't planned it out at all. I basically go about my day and whatever is relevant based on what I experience, based on people that I talk to, based on stuff happening at my own practices when I speak to my principal, based on emails and messages and stuff that I receive, um, it, it's almost like I just get this message where I go, this is the thing that I need to talk about today. This is the thing that's either bothering me or the thing that I feel pressured to share with you guys. Um, so that is how I, I come up, I guess, with my topics every day. So uh, the same is of course true for today's vlog. And how it happened is that earlier this morning, I called a, a company um, that I have used before previously, and I wanted to place an order. Now I tried to do the order on their website, it didn't go through, it didn't work. So what I did is I um, called them up, 1300 number, and you know went through all the little choose one for this, two for that, all that type of thing. And then I got to um, a voice message. So they asked me to please leave a voice message, which I did. And I said, I would like, um, you know, can somebody please call me back? I would like to place an order. This is my number. So about two, three hours pass and nobody's called me back as yet. So I call them back again, again, go through all the option this and that. Luckily, I could just press because I remembered what I had to push previously. And it rings and again, I get to a voice message. 
and I had to leave a voice message again. I did that three times throughout the course of today and nobody as yet has called me back. And I started to wonder about this and I went, you know, is this sufficient to make a complaint and get a bit cranky about because I actually want the stuff by Friday and they um, do like a, you know, delivery within 24 hours. Um, so uh, I guess I was going, ah, oh, it's, it's a bit disappointing. And then I started to wonder, you know, is this potentially happening at my private practice? And I want you to ask, is this potentially happening at your private practice? Because the thing is, only if I tomorrow pick up the phone and complain to someone, will they know what my experience has been with their business. Okay, um, a lot of times we get a lot of glowing uh, recommendations by people or good reviews and stuff uh, for businesses. Obviously, as psychology and allied health practices, we can't get reviews, but I'm talking about just feedback from your customers and clients that you might get or, you know, feedback that they will be giving other people via recommendations and word of mouth. So again, I started reflecting and I went, you know, are there potentially people that call my practice, the psych professionals, who leave a message? Uh, because we only do have um, two lines, but you can only be on one line at the time. So let's say somebody call, you answer. If somebody else calls, they are put on hold until the first line goes open, but we can only be on one phone at a time, which I think is pretty standard for group private practices. A lot of them don't even have the capacity to capture that second call that we can put on hold, which we do. So my question was, how would I know if this is happening to our clients? How would I know if our clients call up, leave a message and nobody calls them back? Obviously, um, as an established group private practice, we've got very specific policies around it. We've got very specific guidelines around it that we teach our admin team and our reception team in terms of what our expectations are. But the thing is, unless somebody complains, you don't know. <laughs> And, and that's a bit of a scary thought for me as a business owner, because how do you, you know, check on this and keep this uh, people accountable for actually implementing these types of policies when you aren't there, when you aren't there on a day to day basis to check that this has been done? Yes, you want to trust your people. OK, you always want to trust your people. But um, Brooklyn says the connection is bad at my end. Hmm, I'm not sure why that is. Just refresh this page. Um, yes, um, as I was saying, um, you want to um, trust your people and trust that they are doing what they need to do. But guess what? We're all human and we all drop the ball. I drop the ball probably more regularly than I would like to admit. All right. So I was thinking around this and I would encourage you to do the same. And Something that I have done before and that I would suggest you maybe consider doing is to actually take a day out of your schedule and spend it with your receptionist at the front desk. Now, the first time I did this and um, all credit to my amazing business coach that I had in the early days, um, this is one of the things that we did in the first 12 months of working together. And I remember the day he said, that I need to take a full day out of my schedule to spend at the front desk. I went, oh, I don't have a full day out of my diary to go and sit at the front desk. Uh, but you know what? A lot of these things that we think isn't worth it, once you've done it, it is. Alrighty. Um, just quickly, if there's anybody else on here um, that's still with me live, can you let me know what the connection is like? Because Bricklin says that she's got a bad connection. So that would be really great if you could let me know. Anyhow, so um, what you want to do is you want to really prioritize that time um, out of your schedule and go and sit with your person at the front desk not to train them, okay? What you wanna do is you want to job shadow them, basically, as if you're a person coming out of, you know, another HR company or company that works with processes and systems, and you wanna really look at what do they, this person do? 
is there structure to their day? Um, do they know what that structure is? How do they prioritize stuff throughout the course of the day? And of course, when you do this, you want to set up your receptionist and position them in terms of going what the purpose of this exercise is. And it's not about evaluating this person's performance. It is about testing and measuring and analyzing all the processes that is happening at the front desk because regularly when i speak to my principal when i speak to my uh, reception people they're telling me how hectic it is like the phone doesn't stop ringing or the moment it stops there's clients there or psychologist that needs to be helped or um, you know phn or medicare or somebody that has to be called they just constantly, constantly busy. And it's really important for us to look at what they're doing, not um, with a, or from a position of going, okay, they look like they're running around like a, a chicken without a head, so they're pretty busy, they're very productive. No, okay, that's not good enough. You really wanna come from the outside looking in, not judging anything that's happening at the front desk and go, all right, what is this person doing? Are they organized, structured, prioritizing, all that type of stuff? Um, are they following through? Is there task completion? Yes or no? Uh, you know, is there enough or, or too much multitasking going on? All those type of questions you wanna ask. And then you wanna ask yourself, what systems and processes are you picking up that could be done more time efficiently, that could be done more effectively, that could be done in a way that causes less overwhelm and frustration for that person at the front desk and potentially people needing their attention. For example, somebody calling in and needing to speak to your front desk. I think it's so, so important to make sure that you do this. I can tell you that you will be amazed at what it is that you notice uh, when you do this activity and how just spending one day at the front desk can help you make changes to your systems, your processes, and potentially even a policy or two just because you have taken the time out. One day can be six to seven hours to actually do this activity. The productivity of your front desk is gonna get increase, the um, satisfaction rating of your clients are gonna increase, and the satisfaction rating of your clinicians are gonna increase. And that person working at the front desk is gonna be so much calmer because um, you know they're gonna be working more effectively. And of course, you wanna do all of this in a very supportive manner. Okay, so I hope that all makes sense. I do not see any questions. Oh, Mel says it's okay here. Fabulous, Mel. Um, yes, I've spoken a lot. I didn't see any um, comments popping up here on my phone. I'm not sure why that's the case. Um, if you've got any questions, please pop it in the comment box. I would love to hear from you and, and your thoughts on, on doing an activity like this with your admin team. I think very often, the front desk is a bit neglected by the practice owner, which is unfortunate because as practice owners, we like to do, well, that's if you anything like me, I like to do more exciting stuff like marketing, you know, projects, uh, building more collaborative relationships and, and doing that type of stuff. And, and that is fun, it's exciting, and that's the stuff that brings in a lot of new business it's because that's all business development and, and that's really what I love doing personally. But it's so important to make sure that the internal systems are running properly because if you bring in a truckload of new business, your system's gonna fall down if you haven't paid it proper attention, okay? You need to have that balance. It's like everything in life. You need to have the balance or it won't work. Let me just check here on my laptop that I've just got down here if there's any comments which I might be able to see more easily than on the phone. Let me just refresh this and have a look. Okay, nothing, nothing. 
Well, if you are listening to the recording and you've got any thoughts or questions on this topic, please share it with me. Maybe you've done this yourself at your practice and you've had a, a really good experience that you want to share with all of us. Please do so. Or maybe if you think, yes, this is an awesome idea, I'm going to implement it. Put that down as well and keep yourself accountable and commit to actually spending a day at your front desk and then I can bet you um, seeing the results of that payoff in a month or two. Alrighty, so seeing that there's no other live questions here, what I'm going to do is finish off for tonight. I still have a long night in front of me because I intend to stay awake until my husband arrives at 1 a.m. This, uh, this morning. I get tomorrow morning. We also have family arriving with him, um, my sister-in-law and her husband that will be staying with us for a while until they settle in. They're migrating here to this wonderful country, Australia. Uh, so they're going to stay here until they settle in and then get their own place. Uh, and that's what we migrants do. We support our family when they come over and we're just so fortunate to be in this country. So I'm going to have a long night and uh, should I share that I intend to do some folding whilst watching Suits on Netflix. So I'm going to be very productive and I'm going to be multitasking. So that is me for tonight. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And I'll speak to all of you again tomorrow for what is going to be vlog number 76. Uh, take care and remember as always guys all you need to do is say yes to your very own ultimate level 5 private practice. Speak to you soon.